here's the challenge sometimes. People in their career, their status, their promotion, their money. What King Solomon is trying to tell you is that sometimes people feel that they're God. I've seen a lot of rich and wealthy guys, but deep down inside, they're broke. They're poor. They're alone. What's cracking, everybody? Money smart guy, Matt Zipala here. Haley, it's you from Dallas, Texas. And once again, we are diving into Proverbs here in the uh, Wealth and Wisdom series. And uh, it's been a minute since we revisited the book of Proverbs. But uh, this week, we are cracking open into Proverbs chapter 28. And if you didn't know this, Proverbs was written by the richest and wisest king who ever lived. And we're looking at the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes in the Bible. There's tons of wealth, success, financial, stewardship, tithing, giving, charity. All that stuff is in these two books because um, King Solomon, when he was young and he said, hey, God, help me out. God says, what do you want? King Solomon didn't ask for money. He didn't ask for wives. He didn't ask for bigger armies. He asked for bigger territories. He asked for one thing. And God was so happy with him. He says, King Solomon, I'm so proud of you, young king. Not only will I give you wisdom, but I'm going to give you everything that you didn't ask for. So, you know, Proverbs says in the beginning, if there's going to be something that you're going to be getting, if you in 2022, the next year, 2023, and for the rest of your life, if there's something you're going to get a lot of, no, it's not money. No, it's not possessions. No, it's not education and books. No, it's not acres of land and real estate. It's wisdom. Because in all that, you'll know what to do with the blessings and the money and the family that you've been given, et cetera, et cetera. So let's unpack here some key Proverbs here in chapter 28. And the unique thing about King Solomon, he's always giving you choices. You know, he's giving you what he call a, uh, an alternative. You can follow this way or you can follow this way. So let's go into Proverbs chapter 28, verse two. It reads like this. When a country is rebellious, it has many rulers, but a ruler with discernment and knowledge maintains order. And I'm looking at the United States of America as it is today and the last couple of years. A lot of people today have not felt safe in the United States of America. People are leaving states. People are leaving California. People are leaving New York. People are leaving Illinois like myself and they're fleeing to states where they feel safe, where there's a leader. And by the way, when you're a good leader, guess what happens? Not everybody's patting you on the back. Not everybody's saying you're doing the right thing. No, there's a lot of conflict when a leader stands up for something. Everybody else falls for everything. And so leaders have to be strong, especially in this day and age. I think my shout to men, we got to start leading again. We got to start leading our families. It starts there. And I know the toughness we have with families and the separation and pandemic and, and all these different things and the chaos and the finances, all these things happen. And we're not going to be the first generation that experiences it. And that's why I lean on wisdom that's transcended the history of humankind right here from the book of Proverbs and Ecclesiastes and how to build your life. Because me thinking that I'm just going to be a good person, it's just not good enough. Okay, let's move into verse four. Chapter 20, verse four reads like this. Those who forsake instruction praise the wicked, but those who heed it, heed instruction, resist them. So in other words, if people are trying to teach you something, you're trying to learn something, what happens when you're in a board? What happens when you're trying to learn a new skill? You're learning about a new subject. People that annoy me the most are people that talk, 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 talk right away without understanding, fully understanding the current situation. So just keep this in mind. If you want to be wise, do not resist those trying to give you instruction. Next verse, evildoers here, verse five. Evildoers do not understand what is right, but those who seek the Lord understand it fully. If you're going out there, doing your thing, running game, all that different things, whatever that game is, and it's not faithfully. It's not godly. It's not holy. It's not based on values and principles and morals that can stand the test of time. Then you're considered an evildoer. If you're conspiring to conspire, you know you're screwing it up. You know you're lying. You know you're cheating. You know you're scamming. Stop doing evil. And what King Solomon says here, evildoers do not understand what is right. But if you're connected to the source, you're seeking wisdom, you're seeking godly guidance, you're seeking godly counsel, guess what? You'll be able to tell what's right and wrong. Next verse. 28 verse 6, it reads like this. Better the poor whose walk is blameless than the rich whose ways are perverse. Becoming rich necessarily isn't about how much money you make. I've seen a lot of rich and wealthy guys, but deep down inside, they're broke. They're poor. They're alone. So is your defining rich? 
Is your defining wealth? Is your defining success? What is it based on? Because when you decide to become a leader, when you decide to stand up for values and principles, people won't like you. That necessarily doesn't mean that you are standing and doing something wrong. All right, let's go to the next one, verse seven. 20 verse seven reads like this. A discerning son heeds instruction, but a companion of gluttons disgraces his father. What type of person are you? Are you listening to instruction? Because remember, in the previous verse here, in verse four, it said, who forsakes instruction, but even more so, you not only forsake your friends, but you forsake your family. You forsake the last name, that home, that neighborhood, that city that you stand for. Verse eight, whoever increases wealth by taking interest and profit from the poor amasses it for another, who will be kind to the poor? This is where, sadly, when I walk into poor neighborhoods, middle-income neighborhoods, and I see a bunch of check cashing stations. I see a bunch of title loan companies. It shakes my head because they're profiting from people that need cash. They're profiting by people that are trying to give you the only thing that they own. And you're charging them 200, 300% interest on it. They work hard for that paycheck. And next thing you know, you're charging them $20, $30 on a $200 paycheck just because you can cash them their check right here and now because they can't get a bank account. Except, or they haven't gotten a bank account set up. You should help them. Those businesses should help them establish and understand banking and increasing their financial literacy. But in the meantime, they say, oh, it's okay. We're just going to make some money. And according to scripture here, according to King Solomon, whoever makes money that way, good luck to you. Next verse, verse 28, verse 13, it reads like this. Whoever conceals their sins does not prosper, but the one who confesses and renounces them finds mercy. Guess what, everybody? You human being, guess what? You're sinful. You, you got stuff that you are doing in the darkness that a lot of people don't know about. And it's only between you and God. And God is waiting for you to confess. God is waiting for you to pray about it. God is waiting for you to ask him for strength versus you trying to seek strength from alcohol, drugs, unnecessary relationships, bad relationships, people, vices. And so when you're looking at being open and honest with yourself, being transparent, the more you are, to the, by the way, to the right people. I'm not saying you need to put your business out online, but you seek the right counsel to share those things with, to confess those things, to seek prayer and strength in. God's going to bless you in a way. So therefore, don't conceal your sins, but make sure you seek the right counsel on who you share it with. Verse 14 reads like this. Blessed is the one who always trembles before God, but whoever hardens their heart falls into trouble. This nation has gotten away from trembling before God. By the way, if there's one thing you're going to fear, fear God. Don't fear making an investment. Don't fear starting a new career. Don't fear helping somebody out. Don't fear helping yourself out. You, what you should fear is fear God. And when you do that, blessed is the one who always trembles before God because he will give you strength. Here's the challenge sometimes. People in the career, their status, their promotion, their money. What King Solomon is trying to tell you is that sometimes people feel that they're God. People feel that they're in charge, which you might be for that job. You might be for the business, but you got to understand who's really in charge. You might be in control of your situation, but who's really in charge is a man upstairs. Next verse here that sticks out to me, verse 19. Those who work their land will have abundant food, but those who chase fantasies will have their fill of poverty. This is a call out to those that are lazy and those that don't really have a plan. Because people out there chasing this and chasing that, chasing this, not only do they have a plan, they're winging it, they're winging it, they're winging it. Hopefully the can, dots can connect. I've seen a lot of people, just because they spend time in an office, in a sales office, in, a, in their own office, starting their own business, just because that they're at the office doesn't necessarily mean that they're working because they're not following a plan. Just because you're at the office for eight hours, but you're on Facebook and Instagram for six hours, doesn't mean you have a fully productive day. You only work two hours out of eight hours, even though physically you're in that office. Physically, you're in your cubicle. Physically, you're on the job, but you're checked out. You're not really progressing. That's why uh, uh, Tim Ferriss' book, The 4-Hour Work Week, exposed all that. He said, listen, out of a 40-hour work week, people blow 36 hours, and they're only really working four hours. Now, he approaches life from a minimalist type of uh, standpoint, but if you're looking from an abundance standpoint, a, pr a prosperity standpoint, those who don't work, you don't deserve to eat. We put out a post a couple days ago that capitalism has been abundantly helpful to my family, abundantly helpful to many families, but it's been misconstrued. And one of the comments says, well, capitalists, capitalism, capitalists punish the lazy. 
I'm sorry, the lazy punish the lazy. The lazy punish themselves. It says right here, those who don't work their land will have no food. But if you work your land, you will have abundant food. And not only do you have much for yourself, but for those people around you. Next one, verse 20. A faithful person will be richly blessed, but one eager to get rich will not go unpunished. Those out there trying to get rich quick, there it is for you. If you want to build lasting, I'm not saying for you to take your time. But if you're in the business right now, it's not prospering the first year and it's not prospering the second year and it's not prospering the third year and you got the right checks and balances in you and you're working your business and you got your systems, your process, you're investing heavily into it. We just haven't had your, boom, your explosion yet. Be patient. Keep working your land. A lot of people are going to quit. And guess when they quit? Right when they're going to have a breakthrough. But don't you quit. You keep working land. You still be faithful. You put in the work. You put in the effort. You stand fast in your position. And watch what happens to you. Watch what God does to you. Oftentimes, I've seen so many people, the biggest thing that people do in my entire career observing entrepreneurs and coaching entrepreneurs for the last 23 years is they quit too soon. They go here, they go here, they go here, they go here, and don't accomplish anything. There's a book written out there called Outwitting the Devil. And inside there, Norman Vincent Peale talks about avoiding the drifters. You avoid, they drift here, they drift there, you gotta avoid them. It's, you know, I don't know if I ever made a conscious decision to do it, but it, I've been in the same industry for 23 years been in insurance for 23 years. I've been distracted by many things over the last 23 years. Real estate, NFTs, crypto, all that stuff. And I've seen everybody in those things, three things I just mentioned to you right there. I've seen all these guys rise. Man, I'm like, am I doing something wrong? Self-doubt. Am I doing something wrong? What are they seeing? But fundamentally, I could not see themselves in it for that much longer. And next thing you know, the crash comes. And that's what's gonna happen. Technically, I think we're already in a recession since July 1st. The government's not calling it. Nobody's calling it. The media's not calling it. I'm calling it. July 1st of 2022, we've been in a recession. Fortune Magazine already says in the housing, we're already in a housing recession. There's more inventory showing up. Property prices are lowering their listing prices for those that are listed for sale. Interest rates are getting higher. But guess what we're doing? We're continuing to be faithful. I'm continuing to work my business. And now people need to make adjustments I don't say they need to go you know, here and there, but they need to make adjustments. Next verse that sticks out. Verse 26. Those who trust in themselves are fools, but those who walk in wisdom are kept safe. You can't be the guy. You can't have all the answers. You can't have all the ideas. You can't have all the right strategies. That's why King Solomon says you need to have counsel around you. And the counselors around you better have wisdom. And what I define wisdom as, wisdom is knowledge, times, experience, and that is wisdom. You gotta be around people that have been there, done that. And some of these guys may talk you in and out of decisions, but at the end of the day, you're the leader. You live by your decisions that are right, you gotta live by your decisions when it's wrong. But at the end of the day, by seeking counsel, you stick by your decisions, you live by your decisions. Verse 27, those who give to the poor will lack nothing, but those who close their eyes to them receive many curses. See, you're supposed to be getting rich and wealthy for a reason. You're supposed to create jobs. You're supposed to lift people out of poverty. You're supposed to lift people out of a mediocre lifestyle. You're supposed to challenge people and lift, lift people up and get people to the next level. You know, that's your job as a leader, as a God kind of man, as a God kind of leader, as a person that wants to be a king in the marketplace, person that's leading their community, leading their family. King Psalm's gonna challenge you to rise up and lead and make sure that you're giving, not just receiving, but you are giving, not hoarding. I think that's why a lot of people have a lot of problem with capitalists today, people with, with capitalistic intentions because they hoard, 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 and people don't feel that they've been receiving honest wages. But here's the thing too as well. Who says that you need to be working for somebody for, forever? Who says that you need to stay at this job forever? If you don't like where you're at, guess what? This is America. Go to another job. Get paid more. Start your own business. Start your own side hustle. That's the beauty of America. Who are you surrounding yourself with? You know, it's a very easy saying that we've said for many, many years. There's three, there's three things you change your life. Number one is the books you read. And so I'll, I'll be reading Proverbs and Ecclesiastes. The second that changes your life is the people that you surround yourself with. And number three is the meetings and the conferences and the events that you attend. So if you find yourself hanging around with people that are just parting it up, people that are hanging around, this, people that say, you know, that's Netflix and chill. You're hanging around people that say, you know what? Let's chill out for the weekend. You work hard Monday through Friday. Listen, when I was a single father, I realized I was still in the military and I wanted to get ahead. I made highest and best use of my evenings and weekends. Was I working around the clock? Yes. Was I working on evenings and weekends? Absolutely. 
Was I sacrificing a little bit here, a little bit? You 100% know it. But was it worth it? Yes. You know why? Because that was clear. And so therefore, if you want to make $100,000 a year, $200,000 a year, you consider yourself going on a run that you don't stop for two, three years. If you want to make yourself a half million dollars a year, you consider going on a run that you don't stop for three, four, five years. Would you invest a decade of your life to make sure that for the rest of your life, you're financially set? Would you? Would you invest 20 years of your life to make sure the next generation is financially set? Would you do it? That's a question you got to ask yourself. And the reason why people don't ask themselves that question because the first question isn't answered. What do you want to become? What do you want to be? And King Solomon says, listen, in all that getting, get knowledge, get wisdom, figure out what that looks like. And so my encouragement to you is you're reading King Solomon. I'm not reading all the scripture for you. I hope that you read Proverbs chapter 28 yourself. And you tell me in the comment section below what scriptures, which verses stick out to you. By the way, if you agree with me, you don't agree with me, please put it in the comment section below. And that's what we do here on Sunday nights. We approach the Bible from an entrepreneurial perspective, from a person that wants to prosper financially, not talking about prosperity gospel either, or poverty gospel for, uh, for that matter, but right in the middle. How do we make sure we do right by ourselves and do right by people around us, and more importantly, do right by the God in heaven that we serve and that we are here to honor and magnify here on earth. So with that being said, guys, um, we got other Proverbs that we've broken down here in previous weeks. Again, if you agree with me, don't agree, what's your feedback, what's your thoughts, please put it in the comment section below. By the way, if you haven't picked it up yet, please pick up my book on Amazon today, Faith Made Millionaire. You've heard of self-made, you've heard of team made, but a lot of people have not heard of faith made, and that's what this book is all about, to overcome the myths and misconceptions of faith and finance and getting ahead financially and still serve the Lord and still serve a purpose greater than yourself. My journey right here in this book, Faith Made Millionaire, because sometimes when you find yourself in the worst position, you actually find yourself in the best position. Thoughts on mindsets and how to master your mindset, your morals, and your money right here in this book. So pick up your copy today, please, and drop a review on Amazon, Faith Made Millionaire. Now, if you found value in this video, please consider hitting like. If you watch a couple of our other videos and you haven't done so already, please consider hitting subscribe and hit notifications to be alerted next time we upload our next episode. From Dallas, Texas, I'm your money smart guy. And until we meet again, continue to live smart, continue to love smart, and be money smart today.